I'll start off this video by saying that some guy on Discord actually let me know that this item was now available in beta. So let's all just in the comments thank the guy on Discord. I don't know what his name is, I deleted the chat. Just call him guy in Discord, right? But look, that doesn't matter. What matters is the actual way that Roblox is changing user interface, okay? Because I know that, you know, I don't know how I'm going to thumbnail and title this video later, but I'm probably going to make it sound like, oh, Roblox is changing user interface forever, or like something similar, you know? I don't clickbait or whatever, it doesn't matter. User interface, for those of you who don't know, somehow, okay? It's effectively a thing that's 2D, okay? So like a button, for example. This is user interface, okay? It's like a 2D thing uh, where I can like, I don't know, click on it or whatever, right? That's what user interface is. And you can hopefully understand that user interface is actually used for a lot of stuff. I mean, any single game that you play, I bet, has a user interface. I can bet every Roblox game has a user. I mean, hell, even Roblox by default comes with user interface. Like this is user interface. You see this, right? Okay, good. And user interface is incredibly helpful, especially something like, you know, viewport frames, which for those who know, they're incredibly cool. But at least in Roblox Studio, they have have been lacking some built-in features. A lot of user interface can only really be fully utilized like at their peak if you are like really good at scripting and you have to like script your own complicated systems. And Roblox just doesn't seem to provide a built-in default way for them. Like I remember when Roblox um, introduced this thing called a drag detector, okay? And what this basically allowed you to do is if I like make a part or something, for example, and I put the drag detector inside of the part, that is Roblox's built-in way of dragging parts, right? Before what people had to do was to actually script this themselves. They had to be like, okay, whenever the mouse is on the part and whenever you're clicking, uh, then move the part slowly to the mouse or like something like that. Point is, it just took a lot of effort for no real reason. And Roblox has been pretty slow on adding these. Like, I'm pretty sure that they only even added these like, like a year ago or something. I could be wrong, but like, they are a fairly recent addition. And where I'm getting with this, okay, is that just like the drag detector, user interface should be able to be dragged as well. Like, for example, what if I have a frame, okay? And then let's say, I don't know, I, I set the color to be like purple or something, right? What if I have this frame? And what if I want this frame to be draggable? Now, I know you might be sitting here right now and thinking like, oh, but why would you even want a frame to be draggable? Why would you want user interface to be draggable? Well, let me show you, okay? Let's say I have this thing, like so, okay? It's gonna be like this bar, for example. I don't know, just on the bottom. And then we're gonna have this frame go inside of here. Now it's being blocked because the Z index should be two or three or whatever. And yeah, there we go, right? And what we've just created right now is a slider, okay? Now, obviously we haven't actually made a slider because what we would have to do is we would have to code the same stupid thing. We'd have to, you know, detect whenever the mouse is on here. We have to detect whenever the mouse is clicking. We have to detect the mouse's position, then position the, you know, uh, square to be the mouse's position. And because this is a slider, we have to somehow ensure that it always stays within the bounds of the slider, which probably isn't that hard to do. Like, you probably should only just change the x-axis then. But still, like, isn't that a, just a little bit too much work for something that is already a thing for 3D parts? Like, you'd think that it should come for 2D first and then 3D, right? And I know it might seem like I'm being a little too weird about this here, like, okay, it's just a slider, whatever, right? But bro, user interface is incredibly important. And the problem with Roblox, like, this is a huge problem. This is a big problem with, like, other games, because I assume the engines that they use probably have this feature already. But in Roblox, user interface is so repetitive. It's insanely repetitive because the majority of people who make games, like I said, they don't really know how to do this dumb, complicated, useless code just to make a scroll. It's a lot easier for them to just be like, okay, instead of a scroll, let's just make like a button or something because that, that's a lot easier. And so you end up with games that just have the same user interface over and over and over and that really sucks. Or it sucked until Roblox made the UI drag detector. You, you, I, I know, shocker. You get this thing by going to file, beta features, and then you can toggle it and everything in case you are a developer. But in short, this thing literally does exactly what I just said. So some some guy out there, so this thing was just added recently, right? Even just like, I, I can imagine like two weeks ago, probably some guys out there, like, I don't know, like wasting hours of his life figuring out how to script this. Like he's like, he's like sitting there and just thinking like, okay, uh, I need to do this and this and that. And now Roblox gave us one item 
which completely fixes all of that. And if I were to go and play the game now, look at that. Do you see this? I, I don't have to script any of this. I, I just added one item and now I can just drag this piece of user interface. Like, can you imagine the things you could do with this? I know I, I know, I just brought up the example of a slider, and we'll get to that, like, in, in, a, in a quick moment. But, like, I don't know, imagine just, like, having buttons on your screen. And imagine just giving the player the option to just, like, drag buttons around. Would that not be cool? Like, if the button is here, and you're like, oh, damn, maybe the player wants their button to be a little bit on the top or a bit on the bottom. You could just insert a drag detector, right? You, or sorry, a UI drag detector, big difference, right? You can just insert that. And the reason that is so crucial and why, why I care so much is because the majority of people would get that pretty cool quality of life idea, right? And they just wouldn't know how to code that. And they, they, they'll just think about it and they're like, I could spend hours trying to figure this out or I could just leave the buttons as is, you know? Like it's not going to be a big difference. And so they just don't do it, which, like I said, just leaves games without these, like, nice quality of life changes. But with this, one item and you're done. That's very, very good. Now, something that you might have noticed is that it's not actually, like, going in the slider, right? Like, I can just drag it all around. Like, I, like it's not going into the slider. And fear not, because the UI drag detector actually has a fix for that as well. There's a lot of properties here, and I'll be honest, uh, I honestly don't even know what most of these do. Like, drag style, scriptable, translate line, translate plane you're lying if you if you tell me that you know what any of these mean however damn let me change that back however the one property that i actually am familiar with and the one that is probably the most important so far is the bounding ui i click on here and then it lets me set the bounding ui for our you know purple square which will be this white frame and this bounding ui effectively now acts as a bound to this frame, which then means that the frame can no longer go outside of this user interface and it has to stay inside. And just like that, we've literally just made a slider with one item and one property tweak. That's it. No code, no spending dumb hours on just useless stuff. We've just made. This is how easy it is now. And it doesn't have to be this big, right? I mean, I just set it to be big to make it an actual slider, but you could make this thing like really tiny and like it, it would still work, right? Look at this. <laughs> like, that's pretty cool. And let me actually show you like what people could use this for, right? Like we have a slider here, for example, right? And what if we wanted this slider to, I don't know, like control the color of the base plate, just for example, right? Like maybe when it's here, uh, the, the base plate's color is one thing. And then when it goes here, the base plate's color is now another thing. Just, I don't know, just for example. Well, then we could now easily do that. Like, all we need is just to say, like, okay, this is zero, this is one, and anything in between, like, for example, if it's half, this will be 0 0.5, and this will be 0 0.75, and then this will be one or something. And I can actually show you how I would script exactly this, right? And look, I know that a lot of people go away when they hear the word script, because everyone else is boring and not funny. But I'm not boring and I'm very funny and also smart and intellectual and just attractive and all of those things, obviously, right? So stick around for a little bit. The way I would do this, because honestly, I haven't even really done this before. Um, I mean, look, we have the offset over here, right? Ignore the scale. I didn't, I'm not using it for this video. So then, okay, the X scale is 0 0.146 and then the end scale is 0 0.766. So then if I can just quickly jot these numbers down, so 0 0.146 and then 0 0.766 then instead of the local script, I would have to, well, first of all, detect when the position of the frame actually changes. So script.parents being the frame, obviously. Uh, I think it's a get property change signal or something, yeah. Yeah, and then it like asks us for the position, which then asks us for the actual property we want to listen for, which is the position. Connect that to a function, just like so. And then what we have to do is we need to ensure that the minimum number will always be zero, right? So we need to basically subtract uh, 0 0.146 from whatever the um, x scale currently is. So we can say local num is equal to script.parents.position.x.scale minus 0 0.146. And then we can get the percentage of that. So local percentage is equal to, and then we would just have to take whatever the num is and then divide that by 0 0.766 minus uh, 0 0.146. And I'll be completely honest, I'm not really in the mood for math right now, so I'll just uh, I'll just do it like this. There we go. 
And so then if I print the percentage now, I know that was probably a, a, a bit complicated for someone who, you know, might not really know math that much. But what this does, oh my god. Okay, uh, you're seeing literal, like, history being made because I just made a mistake for the very first time in my career. Very first time. And it's kind of weird because when I'm, when I'm playing the game, like, actually, it's apparently now changing the offset and not the scale. And I don't understand why it's doing that. So the offset is zero. And then here it's 708. So then we don't we don't use scale, we use offset. Even though it wasn't changing offset before. That's stupid, but whatever. Okay, uh, if we do it like this, then that, I think, should alleviate everything. Let's see. Lovely. Perfect. Look at that. It's saying 1.002. Did I, did I mess something up? Nah, it can't be, right? I'm, like, literally the best scripture ever. 708. Okay. Okay, that's... Uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We all make mistakes in the heat of passion, you know? I'm not sure if that's the right way to use that terminology, but whatever. Yeah, and so now we have a scale from 0 all the way to 1 and anything in between. So now we can just use this number and literally just, I don't know, do whatever we want with it. Like, I don't know. I mean, for example, we could take the color of the base plate and we could just, I don't know, store it in here. Local rig color is equal to color3 dot from RGB, like so. And then we can give it a new color, you know? Like, what color do we want the base plate to be? Let's see. I mean, if the slider is purple, I guess we could do purple. Or we could do like this. Like, yeah, this is nice. Or just like minty green. I like the minty green. Let's go with the minty green. And so then what we would effectively now have to do is we would take this percentage and we just try and convert this original color into the new color, right? So for X, to convert the original to the new, we'd have to subtract this by 91 to get zero. Then we would have to add this by, uh, like, how much? 144, I think? And then this would have to do 110. And then here we do 113, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yeah, so we could just do that, honestly. Local num1 is going to be equal to um, 91 times percentage. And then we do the same thing. Local num2 is equal to... 144 times percentage. And then local num3, same thing. Uh, what was it? 113? 113 times percentage. And I guess we have to make this negative because uh, we're subtracting here. Yeah, and so then what I would do is I would just say, okay, workspace.baseplate.color is equal to color3 dot from RGB. Then it would be 91 plus num1. It would be 91 plus num2. And then 91 plus num3. So what we're basically doing here is the closer this percentage number is to 1, the closer it'll be to the new color. But if the slider is all the way at the start, then it's going to go back to the original color. At least I think. Again, hopefully we're not going to get another stupid error. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. I know some math is still involved, I guess, but honestly, like this isn't that complicated. It it might it might seem complicated because you're just watching a video, but like if you if I actually were to put you in the scenario and actually like tell you to think about it, you probably would figure that out yourself as well. So yeah, what I just made here is a slider with, like I said, one item and one property, and I just threw in a, a small line of code, and we can now do this with one item and a property and some lines of code. And again, this is literally a thing that I cooked up in like, I don't know, like 20 minutes I think I've been recording so far. So it's like, you know what I mean? This thing is incredibly strong and it's going to save every developer hours with user interface. But the biggest thing, I don't even care about the hours part. I honestly don't because look, some nerd, oh, I get to save three hours to do, I don't know, whatever, what do nerds do? They, they watch their girlfriend, like, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube, but, but you know what I mean, you, you know what I'm applying, right? But the basic thing that I really love about this detector, like I keep repeating this, right, is that it's going to allow beginners to now just implement more, better features just faster. Because like I said, what a beginner would do before is they would like think of an idea and like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, for example, I bet some beginner was thinking of doing something similar to this dragging system, right? But then they're like, oh, but I, I don't know how to do that. And like, it just it just wouldn't be worth it for me to sit down and learn this for hours. Uh, and instead, I could just lazy out and just not add the feature. And now it's just literally one click away. I, I will commend Roblox for that. I There's a lot more to be done with user interface and just other stuff in general. Like a lot of stuff here is outdated and should be changed. But this is a very nice step in the right direction. My only complaint is that it uses the same icon as the parts drag detector. Like, I know it's in beta and everything, and I know it just it was just released basically, but like, I don't know, make this like purple or something. Like for me, come on. Like, this is probably the first video about drag detectors. Like, just make it purple, please. I, I I'd appreciate that. <laughs> 
And yeah, I mean, I will say that if you are actually a beginner and you sympathize with everything I'm just, I've just said, like, you're right, you know, I, uh, drag detectors have now saved my life and everything. That's very good. Also, if you really like my teaching style, right, and if you just think I'm, I'm an amazing person and you, you want to give me everything that you have, I do have a course. Okay, let me, let me just, let me just, let me just be a sellout for a little bit. I have a course. It's forty dollars around, I think. Seven hours of beginner to expert Roblox Studio advice. And I'm not going to teach you outdated stuff, which can just be replaced with something like a drag detector or whatever. What I teach is basically like how Studio works, okay? We make a game and everything, but I just teach, okay, here are the basics of Studio so that you understand how the layout works. And now, no matter what idea you have, when you finish my course, you will know how to implement that idea no matter what it is that's a promise okay so yeah go check that out in the description and the pinned comment it, it is free to preview no credit card no sign up i'm not stupid right so you could go check that out right now but yeah like i said um if you're a developer please do uh, go enable this in beta features i don't know if it's actually like out right now for games like I'm, I'm not too sure if this is a studio only feature or if you can actually like start adding this to like actual live games but like I said, do go experiment, do go do go try it out. Um, again, I haven't explored everything that this item has to offer. Like I, again, drag style, drag space. Again, I'm not too sure what these things are. But even just knowing what I've taught you with, you know, what this thing does and what bounding UI is, I guarantee that you can make a really fun game just with this. And yeah, so like I said, comment your thoughts on this below. And again, thank the guy from Discord for this video idea. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.